All right, is this better? Yeah. All right, good. So, um, you know, we are dealing with a bunch of uh, crazy particle physicists here, uh, you know, who cannot control computers, <laughs> but we can control uh, particle accelerators. <laughs> So what, what we do with particle accelerators, you know, we call them atom smashes, and what we would like, what we like to do is to smash atoms, you know, on top of each other, and then look at what comes out. Now, when we talk about our field, you very often see pictures like this, um, and this thing doesn't work. <laughs> All right. So you see pictures like this with particle tracks emanating from the collision point. And what I would like to do now for you is give you a little bit of background information on what it actually is that we're looking at and how we measure that. Okay, and the technique that we use is, is ionization chambers. So, if you have a charged particle that is produced at one of these collision points and it goes through matter, then what that charged particle will do, it will just knock off electrons of the atoms in the medium that it will go through. Right? So we call that that it ionizes the medium. So what you then have to do is you just built a little chamber called an ionization chamber. So here is an ionization chamber. So you have a little chamber. You fill that with a medium that you like. It can be a gas, can be a liquid. It could even be a solid. Then um, you have two planes two electrodes, a cathode plane and an anode plane. You put a high voltage across it, and then when a particle goes through, what it does, it ionizes that medium, and because there's a voltage across these two electrodes, what you do is you start collecting that ionization. That is, in principle, everything that we do. Now, this is a rather <laughs> rudimentary uh, uh, you know, tracking detector. So we have some more sophisticated ones. So here, same principle again. You got an elect two electrodes, a cathode plane, and in this particular case, you know, because what we want to do is reconstruct these particle trajectories in three dimensions. So you have three anode planes. Again, a particle goes through, ionizes the medium, and then you see how the signal develops on those planes, and then you can reconstruct exactly the particles in three dimensions. So each time when you talk about particle physics and you see pictures, even these pictures that advertise this particle slam in the background, you see these tracks here, that is how we measure these tracks. Now, and our techniques are at the moment that sophisticated that we can even measure, you know, events like this of heavy ion collisions where you have hairballs of tracks. All right? So that is the technique that we use. Now, who has one of these ionization chambers in his basement? <laughs> Anyone? Okay, well, I would like to make a bet with you that you have one of those ionization chambers in your home. If you win the bet, I'll buy you dinner. If I win the bet, you buy me a beer, okay? <laughs> so, the people here, if those people who, have, who could raise their hand who have a smoke detector in their home, raise their hand. All right, I won the bet. I need a beer after this. <laughs> so, if you look at the smoke detector, a smoke detector works off exactly the same principle that I just described for particle detectors. Now, how does a smoke detector work? So, here again, you've got two electrodes, an anode and a cathode. You stick a battery in there to apply a voltage for the electric field. And then in your smoke detector, actually, you have a little bit of radioactive material. You have a little bit of americium in your smoke detector. This americium has about 35,000 decays 
per second. Don't worry, it's completely harmless, won't hurt you. Now, it decays into alpha particles, which are helium nuclei. Those helium nuclei will, be, will ionize the air between those two electrodes. And the ionization is then measured. So you measure a current. If there is something between the two electrodes, like smoke in your kitchen, the alpha particles will not penetrate, will not ionize the medium, the current is interrupted, and the alarm will go off. That is how a smoke detector works, exactly the same principle that we use in our particle detectors. I would like to say one more word about americium. Americium was discovered accidentally in 1942 at Argonne National Laboratory during the Manhattan Project. It was an accidental discovery, and as you can imagine, they were looking for another <laughs> material at that time. <laughs> and when it was discovered, it was a discovery that went into the textbooks without any application at that point. Now, but the first charge you have when you discover a new element is, how do you name it? So if you look at the periodic table, it's quite daunting, you know, which name you have to give that element. But the properties of americium were very close to a neighboring element in the periodic table that was called europium. It was named after the continent in which it was discovered. So Mr. Seaborg decided to name americium after the continent in which this element was discovered, which was America. So that's how it derived its name. He could have used Chicago, and Chicagoinium would have been very nice for the people who come from Chicago, <laughs> but you know, that's not what happened. But again, it was an accidental discovery from pure basic science that in the end found its way, you know, in an application that is in everyone's home. So, the next time when you're in your kitchen <laughs> and making a gourmet meal, you know, and uh, the smoke detector goes off and you have an alarm. I hope that what you think then is that, well, you know, here in my kitchen, I have radioactivity <laughs> that was discovered accidentally in this country. And the element is named after the continent in which it was discovered, doing pure fundamental research at one of the national labs that actually saves lives each and every day. So, when the smoke detector goes off, I hope you say, well, this is my particle physics experiment in my kitchen. <laughs> Thank you very much.